One more time, chapter 1 and verse 8. That a man's success starts with a book. This book. Not this idea. Not this suggestion. Not what social media says. This book of the law. This book that contains the mysteries of the kingdom. He says, do not let it depart from your mouth. You shall meditate therein consistently. Day and night means consistently. And then, having meditated upon it, you must obtain grace to live in keeping with the truths therein. It says if you do that, it leaves you with a guarantee that your ways will be prosperous and you will have good success. The real secret, please hear me, the real secret to an excelling life, the real secret to a life of victory, more than what you studied, more than the advantage that family and territory can bring, the real secret in this kingdom to a life of victory, please hear me, is the word of God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning, where there was no professor, where there was no internet, where there was no politician, where there was no stratification of any sort, in the beginning was the word. That means there is nobody who truly begins to succeed if you ignore the power and the supremacy of the word. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word. I, I, I quoted John. I meant to say, forgive me. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and that word was with God, and the word was God. Hear what it says. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 2. Verse 3 says, It says, All things. Everybody say, All things. Shout it, say all things. All things means your promotion, your influence, your excelling, your longevity, your prosperity, your dominion, your influence. All things were made by him. And without him, that means outside of the influence of the world, was not anything made that was made. The word of God is the maker of enviable destinies it is true that we have been called into a life of victory a life of grace but listen carefully walking in the reality of that prophetic word depends on our encounter with the word of God that means in as much as you have great prophecies over your life it does not automatically mean that you will step into the reality of the same. Just because a prophetic word came over your life, that you have a great destiny, that you have a beautiful destiny, just because the Bible attests to the fact that there is greatness within you, it does not mean that by default you will become great. You must have an encounter with the word of God. Now, write this down very quickly. What is the word of God? Just a few minutes to begin as a background. What exactly is the word of God? Because if you do not know what the word of God is, then you may never be able to walk in the reality of the same. What is the word of God? The word of God referred to the thoughts and the intents of God. The word of God, the word logos, where we translate as word means the thoughts of a man that seeks expression. I will give you very quickly for sake of time, 
three definitions of the word of God. Are you ready? Number one, the word of God is an expression of God himself. That's what the Bible says. In John chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible tells us in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. In Revelation chapter 19, when you read, the Bible talks about a rider upon a horse whose name was written on his thigh and his name is the word of God. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 2, apologies I'm rushing because of time. 1 John chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible also talks to us about the word of God from the beginning, that which we have seen. So the word of God is an expression of God himself, an expression of the thoughts of God, an expression of the character of God. Number two, the word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. This is a very important definition. The word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. That means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision and the allowance that the word of God provides. God is almighty. God is great. But he has limited his operation with man to the provisions that the word allows. The Bible declares that he exalts the word even above his name, above his reputation. The word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. Number three, very quickly. What is the word of God? The word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation. His methodology. We call it the wisdom of God. The word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation. His methodology. That means the word of God reveals how God functions. It is the manual that shows you how God functions. His modus operandi. His system of operation. Are we blessed? Three definitions I've given you very quickly. That the word of God is an expression of God himself, his thoughts and his character. Number two, that the word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. And then number three, that the word of God is a revelation of his system, his methodology, how he works. Now, I want you to write this down. Every time you open the Bible, principally, the Bible contains three things. Write it down, please. Everyone who is born again and a child of God must know this. These are foundational doctrines and pillars of the Christian faith that translate to your victory in this kingdom. The word of God contains three things. Every time you open your Bible, Every time you study your Bible, there are three things that you are seeking for. Number one, the word of God contains promises. Please say promises and then you write it down. The word of God contains promises. What are promises? Promises represents God's commitment. The things that he has said he will do. Now you see, the way God works is that he never does what he has not said. If God has not said it, there is no basis for committing him to do it. Genesis chapter 21, please, and verse 1. Write it for reference. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. This is a prophetic word concerning what God did to Sarah. The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah and he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken he visited Sarah as he has said he did unto Sarah as he has spoken anything God has not said anything God has not spoken cannot happen there is no possibility for making it happen is someone learning now so every time you pick up your Bible and you open it Hidden in this Bible are the promises of God. 
the old hymn says standing on the promises of God you can stand upon his promises God this is what you said concerning me God this is what you said concerning my destiny there are promises in this scripture for instance the Bible says here I know the thoughts that I think towards you say at the Lord so he has said it the thoughts of good or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end therefore I have a future and I have an expected end and I can place a demand on the integrity of God to make that happen why because he said it are you learning now now please hear me many believers wish for a great destiny they superstitiously hope that a great destiny will just appear a great destiny is engaged by understanding you have to know what god has promised you so that you can place a demand on it everybody say promises shout it let the devil hear you say promises there are many things that god had promised joshua selman here i don't know about you but the bible is full of promises that god said concerning me for instance he says that the fullness of my days I will fulfill. So based on that promise, no power in existence sustains the ability to cut me short before my life. You have to believe this. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is only what you believe that happens to you. I have believed from scripture, according to the promises of God, that nations, kings, Gentiles will come to my light. And they are kings to the brightness of my rising. Someone shout, I believe. Amen. The promises of God are dependable. The second thing we find from scripture, please write it down. The second thing we find from scripture are principles. Everyone write it and say principles. The principles of the kingdom are called the secrets of the Lord. The principles of the kingdom are called the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Matthew 13 and verse 11. Very quickly, Jesus was teaching and here's what he said. It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. What is a mystery? A mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people for instance in the military there are certain mysteries and languages that only a military man can understand am i right on that mysteries if you come into a man's house there is a way that they operate in that house the man does not need to announce to your hearing madam Go and bring our visitor a bottle of minerals. They have mysteries. They have a way they communicate. There is a way he can look at his wife and the wife understands what he's saying. You who is a stranger will not understand. But they who are in the house understand that mystery. Can I tell you this? In this kingdom, there are mysteries by which we rise. For instance, the Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. It's a mystery because if you are not in the kingdom, you cannot understand why giving and increase is the same. For instance, in this kingdom, you learn that you can dance your way to victory. It's a mystery because it does not make sense until you are in the kingdom. For instance, in this kingdom, we are taught that your words carry power. And that you can speak life and use words to create your destiny is a mystery because anyone who is not a child of God and not in this kingdom cannot understand everybody say principles the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to come upon you and open you to the mysteries of the kingdom can I tell you this dominion is not an impartation dominion is your resultant the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries the principles of the kingdom if you do not understand the principles of the kingdom 
you will find out that you remain a victim of situations and circumstances influence and lifting has biblical principles for instance if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men to myself so when you focus on exalting jesus you focus on making his name known you focus on letting people see him instead of you your reward is that the more you lift him you rise higher as he rises higher too are we together so every time i'm giving you the keys very briefly before we pray you want to live an excelling life it is not by superstition it is not by hoping and wishing no you must search here for the principles of the kingdom contained in this bible are promises god's commitment to you contained in this bible are principles these principles are scattered in stories these principles are scattered in parables these principles are scattered in all kinds of theological exegesis may you find these principles in the name of jesus christ now please look up there is a principle that controls wealth and abundance there is a principle that controls speed there is a principle that controls restoration. There is a principle that controls exaltation. There is a principle that controls divine health. There is a principle that controls dominion over principalities and powers. My question tonight is which one do you not know? The Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. But verse 7 says, you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Everyone shout after me, say in the name of Jesus. From tonight, I obtain grace to know the principles of the kingdom. I obtain grace to know the principles of the kingdom. Please sit down. Twice Jesus cried in the Bible. Just a few minutes and we'll wrap up. There are two times we see that Jesus wept in scripture. Number one was in the book of John chapter 11. When you read from verse 35. He wept when he came to the grave of Lazarus. And they said, oh how he loved him. But the second time that Jesus wept in scripture was when he stood over Jerusalem. And the Bible says he wept and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had known, even in this day, your time, the things that make for your peace, he says, but they are hidden from your eyes. Can I tell you this? Every result you desire in this kingdom, there is a mystery that connects you to it merely wanting the result will frustrate you you must find out the principle it takes apostle i want to be great i came from a family where no one has risen you are not the first as abraham abraham came from a family of idol worshippers or of the chaldeans but god called him gideon from a family defeated family you are not the first to come out of a family of disadvantage. Apostle, I've lost everything through the pandemic. You are not the first to lose. Ask Job. Job lost everything. But the Bible tells us again in chapter 42 from verse 10 to 12 that God restored the fortunes of Job. Let me prophesy over someone here. Everything that has left you that should not leave you in this conference by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we call it back to your destiny. We call it back to your destiny. Please sit down. Can I tell you this? When you see our Father in the Lord stand like this and declare over your life that in the name of Jesus it is well with you and it looks casual and doors open, he's not just speaking. There is a principle that supports what he's saying. For instance, where the word of a king is, there is if you are not a king and you speak, there will not be power. 
the, before you speak, verify whether you know the revelation. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that he has made us a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign on earth. Can I challenge you therefore, utilize the moment of this conference. Don't just sit down and listen to speaker after speaker alone and close your book and go back. Cry unto the Lord and ask him, Lord, what principle do I not know that may be tying me down? What principle do I not know that is making the devil look victorious over my life? Your assignment in this conference is to be like a spiritual archaeologist searching for the missing link to the next level of your life. Number three, and we wrap up for tonight. The third thing we find in scripture are prophecies. Promises, principles, prophecies. Prophecies give us a roadmap to the future. Why? So that there will not be fear again as we leave. It gives us a roadmap to our own future here in this life and even in the life after. This is total victory for the believer. So we know that whether in this life or in the afterlife, we still are victorious because we have searched the end of it and we have seen that even in the end, according to prophecy, we remain victorious. This is the believer's hope. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. So in as much as we excel and we reign in this life, we have hope through prophecy. The Bible lets us know that one day, not a parable, that it will happen. We are going to hear the trump of God sound. Is it in your Bible? Or have you stopped reading it? And it says that we, the dead in Christ, will arise first, for instance, and that we who are alive and remain, we will be caught up. And we will meet him in the air, never to be separated again the bible by prophecy tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth hallelujah the bible tells us that a time is going to come where there will no longer be wars again where there will no longer be famine again where the wickedness of men will not find any expression again so it gives us hope everything that is happening in the earth today to the believer it should not be a surprise the bible already told us contained in scripture are principles contained in scripture are, promise, um, are, are promises and principles and prophecies. Can I tell you, when you find the prophecies, you can bring forth your strong reason. When you find the principles, you can obtain grace to walk in keeping with the principles. The principles do not fail. They are backed up by God's own integrity. And then the promises give us hope and assurance so that we are not afraid. We don't need to enter tomorrow to know what is there. He already went as Omega and he's brought back what tomorrow is. And he's told us that we are victorious. There is no anxiety. There is no fear. He's told us that we are victorious. Did he not say that a time will come when men say there is a casting down? So he told you already that that time will come. In Isaiah chapter 60, did he not tell you that a time will come when darkness will cover the earth and even cross darkness the people? But he told you that upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Listen to me. If you want exceeding expectation, you want exceeding greatness, a life that brings glory to the name of the, the Lord. A life that brings dignity to you. A life that wipes away shame and reproach from your life and your family. Can I be honest with you? Do not make the mistake of Martha. Martha was running around looking for so many things. And Jesus said, Martha, you are, this is, we live in a world where people are running from pillar to post. Ignoring God and pursuing connections. And all these things only find their value if you if. The word of God is in place in your life. Running from everywhere searching for salvation. I came tonight as a first session to lift up the word of God to tell you again that this is not an ordinary book. This was God's recommendation to a young man 
who was able to excel beyond imagination the bible speaks about men who honor this word time will fail me he says to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions You can pay attention to what I've shared tonight and take it serious and begin to open this Bible searching for promises, searching for principles that make for an exceptional life. Or you may fold it as an intelligent preaching from a man of God and not do anything with it because the Bible says they had the word just like we did. But it says the word did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that had it. He says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. I'm hoping that the session that we have will have the time to share a few principles in detail. Because God is determined in this season to announce you. God is determined in this season to see that everything that looks like reproach. Can I speak to you? Listen, as I wrap up, I want to tell you this. Do not let anyone talk you down and believe that just because you came from a background, you came from a place where no one seems to have celebrated you. Nobody in your family has risen to another level. And every time you aspire to rise so that Jesus be glorified in your life, the devil can come and speak to you and say, who have you seen do this in your family? Can I tell you this? By the grace of God, this conference seeks to not only give you enlightenment, but bring grace upon your life that moves you beyond your imagination. Can you spare one minute to pray? Please jump up on your feet. What is the prayer tonight? Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. This becomes our prayer as believers. One prayer point and we are done. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Colossae. And he prayed a prayer for them. Bowing his knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he mentioned three dimensions of knowledge. That must be the capture of our prayer tonight. That ye be filled number one with the knowledge of his will number two ye be filled with all wisdom and number three ye be filled with spiritual understanding that if these dimensions are captured in your christian experience it is impossible for you to fail you can fail if alone but i said you and jesus you and the world cannot fail together say after me father Shout it again. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to contend for promises, for principles, for prophecies through the word of God. Lift your voice and pray. I obtain grace for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of my lifting. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. To search for promises the promises that represent the boundary of your commitment to my life that god cannot be committed to the believer outside of what he has said the promises of god are a capture of how far he can go to lift you to bless you to honor you to reveal himself through you and then principles the ways of the kingdom the modus operandi of the kingdom then prophecies that drive away fear, revealing your future to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I pray for you tonight. That in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Every promise of scripture that your eyes need to see. That is connected to the next level of your destiny. This night, may my God open your eyes to see it. May my God open your eyes to see it. Some of you, it will be revealed to you in dreams while you sleep. May my God open your eyes to see it. The principles that you may have ignored, that may have been responsible for stagnations, 
and limitations of all sorts in the name of Jesus Christ may the light of God's word come tonight and open your eyes to understand those principles finally 